try again. By now, you have a general understanding of email marketing and the kinds of emails used by digital marketers. In this section of your learning journey, we're going to be covering all things automation. And I'm also going to tell you how to write effective emails. First, we'll go over best practices when it comes to building up your mailing lists. You'll learn how you can get new subscribers through different tactics like using Google Display Network, Facebook lead ads, and SEO. And after you've built up your list, you'll want to segment it. I'll explain what that means later, but recall from a previous video that segmentation is the practice of dividing an email subscriber list into smaller groups based on criteria like interests, location, or purchase history. There are four major ways you can categorize your lists, geographic, demographic, psychographic, and behavioral. After we've worked on segmenting some lists, we'll ensure you have the necessary knowledge and resources to write effective emails, and you'll get plenty of practice. Then I'll introduce you to automation tools like HubSpot and MailChimp that will make your workflow as smooth as possible. You'll learn how to avoid mistakes in email marketing and what to do to fix those mistakes, if you do make them. All in all, this will be a fun section with lots of learning materials and lots of space for you to practice your new skills. And it's important to be familiar with these concepts because as an email marketer, you'll use all of this, possibly on a daily basis. Are you ready? Meet me in the next video. Perhaps the most important part of your email marketing campaign is its recipients. After all, without a mailing list, there's nowhere for your emails to go. In this video, we'll discover the tactics that businesses use to build up their mailing lists. A huge part of email marketing is lead generation. Lead generation is the practice of collecting a potential customer's email address. Every time you acquire an email address, you're generating a lead that could potentially turn into a sale. And since the main purpose of email marketing is to turn possible subscribers into loyal customers, leads are pretty important. The moment you start generating leads, you've begun building up your mailing list. So how do you go about getting those leads? Email marketers typically use one or more of the following strategies. Website prompts, display ads, which are shown in the Google Display Network, or through Criteo, SEM Rush, and Taboola. Social ads like Facebook lead ads, search engine marketing, or SEM, referrals, and direct email marketing. One no-cost way to build your mailing list is to create a prompt on your website, asking customers to provide their email address. Marketers love this technique because it doesn't require any additional budget, and it's a single tactic that makes all the difference. Users visit websites for a reason. If they're visiting your website, they are, at the very least, intrigued by your brand to some extent. So it's a great idea to add a prompt on your homepage that encourages them to provide their email. You can even offer them something in return, like a discount code or some kind of free content. A website prompt is a digital banner that calls on a website visitor to act in some way. Another way is through display ads. Display ads are graphic ads on websites and apps through banners comprised of photos, text, or videos. When used in an email marketing context, they will include a place for the internet user to fill in their email, or it will link them to a landing page where they can sign up. When the email is filled in, the lead is generated, and the email is added to the mailing list automatically. Display ads are an effective way to build up your mailing lists, but keep in mind that they do come at a cost. At many organizations, there is no budget allotted for list building, so you may want to focus on some best practices that don't require spending. And of course, you may work in an organization that does have a budget for list building. Recall that when someone creates a website or a blog, they have the choice to opt into the Google Display Network. And if they choose to do so, the ads will appear on their site. Those are display ads. Another great way to get email addresses added to your mailing list is through the use of social media ads. If you use social media, you've probably seen social ads before. If you don't use social media personally, you can always go back to the course before this one to learn more about it. Social ads are paid advertisements on social media platforms targeted to social media users. Some social media channels offer ad formats specific for lead generation. For example, Facebook has lead ads. These are similar to display ads in that they combine text, images, and a URL that links to a website where customers can learn more or buy products. However, these ads feature a form where users submit personal information, such as their name, email, or anything else the advertiser chooses. And rather than existing on a website or blog, they exist on social media. 
Let's say a book publisher wants to build up their email list using Facebook lead ads. The publisher provides an incentive for people to sign up for their list. Anyone who adds their email to the blank field can download one chapter of their newest book at no cost. All they have to do is sign up by providing an email and agree to the terms and conditions set by the brand. You learned about search engine marketing in a previous course, but let's talk about its relationship to your email marketing campaign. Recall that SEM is the increase of a website's visibility in a search engine through paid advertising. If you are using Google.com to search for something, you will see some paid text ads above the organic results. This is an example of search engine marketing. One way to build your list using SEM is to include a discount or other type of incentive written out in plain text in your ad, enticing those who subscribe immediately in the ad copy. Another way is to use SEM specifically for email marketing lead generation. So if a customer is browsing a website, they may see an ad for your company with a form included directly in it. They can fill out the form then and there, resulting in them subscribing to your list. One way to get additional emails without added cost is to rely on customer referrals and forwards. A customer referral is a word of mouth initiative that encourages existing customers to introduce their family, friends, and contacts to become new customers. Think about how much you trust your best friend or closest family member. If they told you you'd like something, you might believe them. Customer referrals are incredibly valuable because research has found that people are four times more likely to buy a product when they are referred by a friend. If your brand has a loyalty or referral program, you can offer subscribers points, discounts, or credits toward their next purchase in exchange for them sharing a referral link with friends. Or you can keep it even more simple and ask them to forward the email to friends. Either way, the goal is to get another subscriber and even possibly another customer, and referrals and forwards can help you achieve that. While we are talking about building your list, it's important to discuss the ethics around handling personally identifiable information, or PII. PII basically refers to any data that could potentially identify a specific individual. When people share information with a company, it's important to use it in ways that build trust and for only the intended purpose. Your subscribers didn't have to share this information with you, but they did. And in doing so, they are trusting your company to use it for good. As a digital marketer, it's your job to make sure you are up to date on your country's latest laws and legislation regarding PII. Okay, let's recap. To generate leads or build your mailing list, apply these tactics. Use website prompts, display ads, which are shown in the Google Display Network, or through Criteo, SEM Rush, and Taboola, social ads like Facebook lead ads, search engine marketing, referrals, and direct email marketing. We'll talk some more about lists throughout this section, so stick with me. If you were having a party, you wouldn't want to invite someone that you knew wouldn't want to come, right? The same is true in regards to sending your email list to someone who wouldn't care about the content in it. In this video, you'll learn the basics of email list segmentation and its benefits. Segmentation is the practice of dividing an email subscriber list into smaller groups based on criteria like interests, location, or purchase history. Once you build an email list, you need to segment it. Using segmentation, a company is able to deliver the most relevant content to its subscribers. The more tailored and personalized the email is, the more likely subscribers are to enjoy their emails, which can result in sales and brand loyalty. You can segment your list based on any number of criteria, but most companies segment their lists by geography, psychographic characteristics, demographic data, and behavioral data. Let's explore what each of those means. When you're segmenting your list by geography, you might do it by location, climate, population, language, or environment. This segmentation focuses on the physical location of your subscribers. If your brand is offering free shipping, on all orders for the month of October, but you're only offering it in the United States, you will want to segment your list by country so that international customers aren't misled or confused. And you wouldn't want to send an email written in Mandarin to a German-speaking country, right? If you intend to send emails out in a few different languages, consider segmenting by language. Let's say you work for a clothing company in Asia. Because of the extreme variances in weather from region to region, you may want to segment your emails by environment or climate. In Asia, there are many geographic regions with varied climates, such as the desert, 
the rainforest, and the tundra. Customers that experience cold winters, like those in Japan, China, Russia, and Korea, might be interested in your company's new winter coat, but customers in more tropical Vietnam and Thailand might not be. Another way to segment your list is by psychographic characteristics. Psychographic characteristics are based on customers' activities, interests, and opinions. This includes factors like lifestyles, values, and hobbies. If you handle digital marketing for a local grocery store, you might segment based on dietary preferences. Are some subscribers vegan or gluten-free? Segmenting by lifestyles and diets can help ensure you send useful, targeted content to people, while also ensuring you don't send anything unappealing or offensive. If you work for a health and wellness company, your subscribers that enjoy cycling might want to know about the most famous bike paths in the world. But you may have subscribers that prefer running, in which case you'd be able to send them a list of running trails instead, thanks to segmentation. The next category to segment your list by is demographics. Demographic data includes information such as age, gender, income level, and family status. Segmenting by demographics is great because it's based on fairly consistent information, whereas psychographics are more subject to change frequently. Let's say you handle email marketing for a company that books travel. Your company has a special romantic getaway idea that they want to include in their newsletter. This is an example where it's important to know if each subscriber is single, in a relationship, married, in a domestic partnership, or has a family. So you may want to segment your lists by family status. Or let's say a famous band from the 1980s is going on tour again for the first time in 20 years. The concert venue that you handle email marketing for wants to announce that they'll be performing at your venue. However, subscribers who are under a certain age may not find this interesting at all. Thankfully, your list is segmented by age group, so you can target subscribers whose age suggests they may enjoy the band. And finally, let's talk about behavioral data. Behavioral data refers to the actions your customer takes or doesn't take when it comes to shopping on your website. This is one of the most important categories because it gives you a glimpse into how a customer engages with your specific brand and products. Purchasing habits, spending habits, browsing habits, loyalty to your brand, and engagement with your website are all great ways to segment your list based on behavioral data. If you work for a sporting goods store, knowing whether a subscriber is visiting your site for the first time or if they've been a longtime customer can help you change your messaging and get the right email to that customer. For a new customer, sending an email that says, it's nice to meet you, here is 10% off, will work just fine. For a longtime customer, you might send an email with a message like, it's great to see you again, here's 10% off on your favorite team's gear. If you want to reward customers who purchase frequently from your website, you'd segment your list based on customer loyalty to your brand. That way, only your most devoted customers receive the most exciting offers. Before we move on, let's recap. We covered four very common categories of email marketing segmentation, geography, psychographic characteristics, demographic data, and behavioral data. And as you choose one category, you can break it down even further and target audiences more specifically. Although marketing emails have become more design-focused and streamlined than they used to be, the most important part remains the same, the content. You can create the most beautifully designed emails, but if the copy isn't compelling, informative, or adding value for the reader, it won't matter. If you aren't sure where to start with your emails, don't worry, it's a big task. Writing emails is a skill that takes practice, but in this section, we'll provide you with some best practices and guidelines that will help you do so effectively. Let's start by talking about your subject line. This is the first thing your recipients will read before they click into the email. So the most important thing is that it answers the question, what are you offering? And when it comes to your subject line, prioritize clarity over catchiness. And if you feel like it's clear enough, add a little excitement. Here's an example. Let's say my company is an emerging online audiobook and podcast company, and my email's purpose is to introduce the business to my audience. So I ask myself, what am I offering? And how can I be clear about that? The subject line might say something like, books for your ears, that clearly explains my company's mission concisely, or bookworms, you've been waiting for us, so that it's clear who my target audience is and that they'll be interested in what my company has to say. 
Now, let's move on to the body of the email. Recall that the body of an email is the text in the main content of your email. When you're writing it, you want to consider the following questions. How can this content help your reader? What stories can you tell them? After you've answered those questions, you can prioritize. Writing in the second person, personalizing the email, telling about the benefits rather than the features, and being brief. Ensure you are always speaking directly to your readers by using second person language. The second person point of view is used for giving directions, offering advice, or providing an explanation. It means you are always using the pronouns you, your, and yours, like how I'm speaking to you now. The only time you aren't referring to your audience as you, your, or yours is when you are using their name. Email marketing automation tools allow you to use merge tags or personalization tags to make emails as personal as possible. A merge tag or personalization tag is a code that allows the writer to insert unique user data from their mailing list into emails. These tags will vary depending on which programs you are using, and we don't need to get too far into the details on them, but sometimes it's as simple as typing two curly brackets, F name, and two more curly brackets to prompt the program to include the reader's first name. So if we are talking about the body text of my audiobook company's email, I would type, hey, two curly brackets, a space, F name, space, two curly brackets. What's your favorite book? We've got it. And if my reader was named Angelique, she would see, hey, Angelique, what's your favorite book? We've got it. After I've created a clear and clever headline and I've personalized my first bit of body text, I'll want to explain why the reader should care about my company. I can do this by talking about how it will benefit them rather than the actual features of the product or service. So my body text might read something like, hey, Angelique, what's your favorite book? We've got it. And if you like to listen to your books rather than reading them, we've got you. Listen on your way to work, at the gym, or while you're doing the dishes. Listen anytime, you deserve it. Now the final thing I've made sure to do is be brief. There's no reason to go into very specific detail about your company, product, or service. Keeping your email short and succinct will keep your readers interested and it won't make them feel like they're doing a lot of work to read the email. After your body, include a call to action of some kind. This may include a button encouraging readers to try a product now or visit your website. For my make-believe audiobook company, I might end the email with a clickable button that reads, try it for free now. We'll have some activities for you to practice, but I would encourage you to practice writing emails on your own. It can be really fun. As you do that, remember that for your subject line, ask yourself what you're offering the readers. As you write your body, ask yourself, how can this help your readers? What stories can you tell them? And wrap it up with a call to action that clearly says what you want them to do. I'll meet you back here later. When it comes to digital marketing, automation has become the key to a campaign success. Email marketing automation helps you find your audience and serve them only the content they want. Email marketing automation tools help email marketers generate leads or turn strangers into customers. With automation, email marketers can send personalized messages to each individual subscriber. Email marketing automation is the practice of using software, programs, and technology to manage email marketing processes automatically. Email marketing automation makes the email marketing process simpler and smoother. It ensures your campaign stays organized and on track. And it happens in the background, so you can be completing and focusing on other tasks if necessary. Automation has positively affected our lives in countless ways. Whether it's driving a car instead of walking, managing your money by using software rather than manually balancing your checkbook, washing your clothes in a machine rather than by hand, or anything else that you do in your everyday life. Automation just makes things simpler. It's the same with email marketing. As a digital marketer, you'll absolutely want to become acquainted with these automation tools because they're integral to the success of your marketing campaign. That's largely due to the fact that marketing automation tools ensure your emails don't lose your personal touch. With automation, you can track emails automatically, and the real key to automation success is just how targeted your emails can be. Using automation, you can efficiently build up your list, segment that list, send automatic welcome and acquisition emails to new subscribers, 
follow up with newsletters, promotional emails, and retention emails using templates, and easily track the engagement and behavior of each subscriber. And depending on which tool your organization uses, all of those capabilities, actions and insights, and more, will live in the same place, your marketing automation tool. Later, you'll learn about specific automation tools such as HubSpot, MailChimp, and Salesforce. But there are countless other options when it comes to marketing automation tools. Regardless of what you use for marketing automation, all of these tools are a very important aspect of email marketing, and they'll help you become that much better at digital marketing. Like many other jobs, email marketing comes with its challenges. How will you decide on templates for your campaign? A design? What type of tone do your emails need to have? How will you even manage every single aspect of an email marketing campaign? from sending a large volume of targeted emails to tracking your insights. Luckily, there are tools that were created to streamline this process for email marketers. Email marketing automation tools like HubSpot, MailChimp, and Salesforce are all great options for sending emails. Although you will still have to remain engaged in your automation processes, for the most part, these tools will do a lot of the work for you in the background, allowing you to focus on other aspects of your campaign, like planning strategy and writing engaging copy. In this video, I'll give you a very high-level introduction to a few of those industry-leading tools. I'll talk specifically about HubSpot, MailChimp, and Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Let's get into it. HubSpot is one of the most commonly used email marketing automation tools, mostly due to the non-cost version, which offers robust features. Through personalization, you can offer different experiences based on your personas and key audiences. Since it's so customizable, HubSpot allows for intuitive and effective A-B testing and email marketing, which is invaluable when it comes to finding out what kind of emails your customers engage with. Another one of the more popular marketing automation tools is MailChimp because of its user interface and robust email template editor, making the automation process effective. MailChimp's automation tools include pre-built journeys, which offer customizable workflows for some of the most common marketing automation use cases. Salesforce Marketing Cloud is an industry leader in many ways. When it comes to email marketing automation, the Salesforce platform is well-liked because it offers powerful customization. It's a little more expert level than the others, but with that comes more capabilities, like customizing your interface. So, that's a very high-level look at a few different types of email marketing automation tools. You'll get a much more extensive and specific look at them in the following readings, but I hope you feel like you have a foundational understanding of the pros and cons of each of them. And if you join an organization that uses a particular tool that you are unfamiliar with, don't worry. You'll be able to apply what you learn here to many different automation tools. The ways the tools work and the tasks they perform are similar. You'll just have to learn the specific features. And to learn more about these specific tools, be sure to visit their websites. Although email marketing is an incredibly trusted and effective way to keep your clients up to date, it's important to note that sometimes mistakes happen. This video will give you some tips for when those mistakes occur so you can recover and so that your relationship with your subscribers isn't affected. Since you're sending the emails to your recipients' inboxes, there's no way to edit them in real time. Once the email is sent, it's out of your hands. Some common mistakes are sending a broken link, sending an email to the wrong segmented list, sending an outdated or incorrect email, sending emails with personalization mistakes, or sending emails with typos or mistakes in the email copy. The good news is you can take preventative measures to identify mistakes and fix them before you send emails. First, let's talk about sending a broken link. A broken link is a hyperlink that no longer leads to the correct website for whatever reason. If you're sending a marketing email that hyperlinks to external websites, PDFs, documents, or something else, and the reader gets an error message, your link may be broken. And the best way to ensure this never happens is to double check every hyperlink before you send the email out. It always helps to have another set of eyes on your email as well. So enlist the help of a colleague to ensure everything looks okay. Let's say you link to a blog from your website in an email, but the URL had a typo. How do you fix this mistake? You can redirect them so that the link with the typo sends subscribers to the correct URL. Or you can let it go and aim to triple check next time, because even the most experienced email marketers make mistakes. 
Another mistake made in email marketing is when an email is sent to the wrong segmented list. Recall that your lists are most likely going to be segmented based on demographics, behavioral data, psychographic characteristics, and geography. So if you want to send a targeted email to your list of 18 to 25 year olds because they're more likely to purchase a certain item, but you accidentally send it to your 40 to 55 age group, you've sent the wrong email. First, to prevent this from happening in the future, you'll want to create some kind of quality control or QC process for your marketing emails. Quality control is a process through which a business seeks to ensure that product quality is maintained or improved. This might include creating a checklist that ensures you're using the right format, content, personalization tags, and anything else you may want to be extra careful about. If you make the common mistake of sending the wrong or outdated email to your subscribers, don't panic. There are some steps you can take to fix it. Of course, the best way to fix this mistake is for it to never occur in the first place. This means you need to be incredibly fluent in your automated systems, tools, and software. Regardless of what tool you're using, you should aim to be an expert user. This will decrease the likelihood of sending an incorrect email. However, should it happen, sometimes all it takes to make things right is a thoughtful follow-up email. You may want to have some apology templates already created in your marketing automation tool so that it can go out as swiftly as possible. You'll need to make it relevant to your specific situation, of course. Let's say you sent an email that said there was a sale on a particular product, but the product is already sold out, and the sale ended a week ago. This mistake has threatened your credibility, and you need to apologize to your customer base. In your apology email, you'll need to admit your mistake, apologize to your subscribers, and offer them something to make it right. Your follow-up email might say something like, we messed up. We're sorry. We sent an email claiming a product was on sale, but that product is in fact out of stock, and the sale ended last week. To make it up to you, we're offering you 10% off the entire store for today only. Your subscribers will probably forgive you for the mistake, and they'll definitely appreciate the discount. Perhaps the most common mistake of all is sending out an email with typos. Like the other common mistakes, these typos leave you at risk of losing credibility with your subscribers, and they can be especially damaging when they occur in personalization tags. Sending, here's a gift for you, Malcolm, is obviously much more effective than sending an email where you misspell your tag and it ends up reading, here's a gift for you, bracket, first main, bracket. To ensure you don't have typos, grammatical mistakes, or personalization errors in your email, Conduct an automated spell check using an online spell checker or some kind of plugin on your internet browser like Grammarly. QC your email by proofreading several times and make sure to send a test email to yourself to double check all personalization tags are spelled right. Finally, automated emails can sometimes end up in spam folders rather than inboxes. This could be because you're not adhering to your country's spam related laws or because your email seems like it might be spam. Emails may be flagged as spam when they include too many images or images that are too large. Take note of this and make sure to send yourself a test email first and review that you don't have too many images. Now that you know some of the most common mistakes in email marketing, I hope you feel equipped to avoid these mistakes in your journey as a digital marketer. Congratulations on finishing this video from the Google Digital Marketing and E-Commerce Certificate. Access the full experience on Coursera, including job search help, and start earning the official certificate by clicking the icon or the link in the description. Watch the next video in the course by clicking here, and subscribe to our channel for more lessons from Google Career Certificate.